Okay, so I figured I'd give you guys a little solar update. I would have loved to record this while I was building it, but I honestly had no clue what I was doing. I was just winging it and ended up being a little overbuilt. So as you know, we are building the shop, just waiting on our main door to go in and some final grade and will mostly be operational over here. I'm not doing any traditional electrical or plumbing. I'm gonna try to solar power it. So the first thing I wanted to do is uh, get a couple solar arrays built, which I can do in this space, which is great. Um, so I have 10 of these 355 watt REC solar panels. They are not bifacial, they're a little bit older design, um, but they were so cheap from Signature Solar. I was able to get a pallet of 10 for $700 on Black Friday. So $70 a panel for brand new 355 watt felt like a awesome deal so there's some challenges because i don't have a traditional solar charge controller and battery bank set up i am using the anchor uh, 3800 with one expansion battery so a lot of you are pretty familiar with this i'm sure we're not getting a lot of input right now because it's completely cloudy 79 watts out of 700 plus available so got a big spool of wire there so i'll kind of explain what's going on and uh, you see I have all these extra panels over here ready to do work. As I, and that's my neighbor's dog. You don't live here, Nessie. Um, so yeah, so I made this panel um, using SunMac uh, mounting brackets from Amazon. A packet of these was about $25. Uh, just mounted to some 2x4s. And it immediately became apparent that this was going to be a lot bigger than the pictures that I had seen online of people who had done similar builds because of the height of my panels. They are, the total size is 34 and a half inches wide by 79 inches tall. So I had to decide whether or not I wanted to flip them sideways and do two like that really long, but that would just get so long and be kind of hard to store might be difficult to move difficult to brace right um and then if i put them in a vertical or just stacked configuration no matter what i was going to end up with this square so i just went ahead and did the square um i started like i said so i started with these in mind as how i was going to mount them to my frame i went into the shop measuring the length of the panel plus the distance of the brackets once i mounted them so I believe everything came out to 82 inches. So then I have my 82 inch post going down, braced it across the top, braced it across the bottom, used the little scraps. Now these would be more effective if they were longer, um, but I was trying to keep costs down and just use what I had. So I made some corner braces, just cutting the smaller pieces I had laying around at 45 degrees and threw them in there. When I stood it up, it was still quite wobbly because uh, there's only one vertical brace going with those. So it's still quite wobbly. So I went ahead and added two horizontal braces to keep everything tight on the back. Once I laid that down, I built the floor brace by leaning this. I had my wife hold it and I leaned this back to about 29 degrees because they say 28 to 30 degrees is what we should shoot for in central Florida. So that might be right, might be wrong, I don't know, but there's a little flexibility in the design so I can tilt it back and just kind of move the bolts if I need to. Um, but using that, kind of eyeballing it, I determined the length that this needed to be to stick out just far enough so to keep it stable, you know? Um, and then I connected it with a quantity of three four inch heavy duty door hinges, which allows it to pivot either way. I just squared up this bottom bracket, four feet is what I came up with. Uh, ran a couple of braces across, leaned it back. Again, just kind of eyeballed it for the angle with my wife and marked the holes. I drilled the holes on the main frame, on the bottom frame, and I used half inch by four and a half inch lag bolts and washers to hold it in place. Um, it was just, 
you know, again, cost effective and easy and semi-permanent ish to hold it in place. Uh, and once that was locked in, I essentially had the whole frame set together. And then my next task was figuring out how to make it mobile. Um, it was heavy enough that I, I want a solid wheel, but it was really hard to find a eight to 10 inch wheel that was kind of all terrain capable because as you can see, we go through millings and some dirt. It's not all just on hard pavement. So I needed something that could tackle the uneven and soft terrain as well as be able to turn. And so what that led me to was Harbor Freight. So I went with two stationary uh, casters in the front. These are 10 inch pneumatic from Harbor Freight. So we have two stationary up here and then we have two swivel casters in the rear. And I was trying to figure out a way to mount them that wasn't ultra complicated and that would kind of support itself with the additional load so that I wasn't relying on just the strength of the, the sheer strength of the bolts holding the caster to do the work. And so knowing that the casters were about three and a half, four inches on center for my holes, what I ended up doing was going to Home Depot and picking up two eight foot two by eights and just running them underneath because that ties in the frame on both sides makes it more rigid gives me the ability to come through here and pick it up with forks if i need to with the tractor uh, and then i was just able to drill my holes and put the lags in and those were four inch by five they're, they're five sixteenths bolts and washers and nuts that are four inch long so and that gave us the ability to be mobile so i can come in here now you can see i have it kind of locked to the side but it's quite easy to roll around and uh, my wife can move it it just barely you can see it's quite close i have about two inches of clearance from the garage door so at night what i'm able to do or if there's gonna be hail or anything like that crazy winds right now i can just put it in there and call it a night and roll it out during the daytime unfortunately since i have finished we have had an infinite amount of clouds so we have little spots of sunshine where i was able to get over 600 watts on this yesterday which was pretty cool um so you know it's reasonably efficient it's it ended up being about 28 and a half to 29 degrees of pitch uh when it was said and done so naturally on the uneven ground it's gonna shift a little bit as well these things are big and kind of a pain to deal with and so i was concerned you can see it's not perfectly lined up when i mounted them but i was looking for a solution that would allow me to lift the panels in place by myself and so i ended up leaving it just because it's additional support so why not this is all for science after all you know and what I did was, since I knew the brackets hung down below the panel, I just screwed some scrap wood that I had to be flush with the bottom of the frame, which allowed me to set the panel on the frame. And it basically held itself up for me while I shifted it slightly to drive the fasteners into the frame to hold it permanently. So I have fastener or you know frame mounts on the bottom, on the top and then one on each side. I don't have any in the middle. I did give myself room and I did put that brace in there so I could uh, theoretically mount one there, but I opted not to uh, just for ease of installation. And this is all for science. It's all temporary, semi-permanent, just to see how efficient the panels are and have the ability to charge up the anchor while all this construction is still happening and I'm figuring out where I want to set things long term. Ideally, I would have two of these, but given their size, I, I don't know that I'm going to make a second one of these temporary ones. I have a more permanent solution in store with the uh, EG4 Bright Mount Solar Rack from Signature Solar. I'm going to put that together soon, but I need to get our final grade done on there so I can mount the solar panels behind the, the shop. I should be able to get four or five on that rack and uh, we'll see how that goes. But I was able to get this far and it's, 
you know, it's overbuilt. It's a little heavier than I had hoped, but it works ultimately at the end of the day. I'd say, so we used two two by eights that were eight feet long. Those are around 10 bucks a piece, I think. I think we consumed about, uh, call it eight, two by four by eights. And those are about $6 a piece. Um, the casters were very expensive. They were $17 a piece for the fixed and $18 a piece for the ones that could tilt from Harbor Freight. So $80 in casters, safe to say 100, 120 bucks in wood and fasteners. So uh, all in all, this is about 200 bucks, a couple dollars on the hinges. So around $200 to build this. Um, for reference, that EG4 bright mount made out of aluminum is, I want to say 350 bucks or so, plus shipping from Signature Solar. And this aluminum frame tubing over here, which I consider building it out of, is something like six, seven dollars a foot easy in my location. Might be cheaper where you are, but it's quite expensive out here. And there's not a lot of room for error with that, like there is with the wood. You know, I'm not, I cry a lot less if I mess up a cut on a two by four. So, um, you know, 200 bucks gets us going. We're still in the sun. So I just wanted to share that with you. So I'll keep you posted on the future updates and, uh, let you see how we're progressing out here. So till then, stay safe, enjoy your shop space and steal the sun.